So I'm, I'm going to start with talking just a little bit of, about one of my mentors, uh, Jonas Salk. He was the guy who invented the polio vaccine. And really, he, along with many team members and other scientists, set in place a mechanism for removing a really dreaded disease. And humanity's benefited from that. In the work I was doing, I was working with him on sort of the next phase of his contributions. And he had started a group called the Epic B Group. And the Epic B Group was top scientists, philanthropists, heads of corporations coming together. They could see that at current trends, there was going to be a crash of population. Three to five billion people would die in the mid part of the 21st century, given the models that they were looking at. The second part is that they could see that the crash was not inevitable, that humanity has the capacity for wisdom. And if we exercised it in a collaborative fashion, we would be able to actually change the outcome and go into what would be called an S curve. The J curve, the population goes up, overextends carrying capacity, and then has to crash because the food, the water, the environmental services are not there anymore we're adding a billion people every 15 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're at seven billion, we're gonna be nine billion in, uh, within 30 years, mm. whereas it took all of history to you know, 1830 to reach one billion. Right, um, it's huge. And uh, that obviously can't continue. No. So the other alternative is the S-curve, essentially bringing it into balance within the carrying capacity and bring it back yeah. into uh, you know, a level that is just sustainable. Yeah, so I mean, we've talked a little bit about permaculture and certainly creating resilience is your push really, resilient communities that can take care of themselves, the, the, the resources that they have um, will keep cycling around so that they, they are within, within their own capacity, basically. Yes. My ecological footprint, for example, is mm. 44 times the sustainable level. Mm. Lived in a big house in the Potomac Preserve and was traveling all around the world. And uh, I could see that that was not sustainable. And I did an experiment. I moved on to this boat to see what mm. would be, um, it would be right. like. Could I actually measure everything? How much water do I need? You know, what, what are the food inputs into it? What are the waste uh, creation? What is the, you know, how's that managed? And what about energy? You know, can I, I put up these solar panels and eight months of the year now I can live off grid here, but by sailing down south, I can live there uh, all year all round. All year round, yeah. Off grid. Yeah. You are living, you're embodying what you take out there and that for me is a true healer because you, you're living on your boat, the minimum possible impact to the environment that you can have right now, and you're a living example of a truly great healer. Well, and, and you know, the amazing thing is most people would think, oh, I just can't, if I gave away all of this stuff, I would actually be diminished. I would not be as joyous. I wouldn't have as much in my life. But what I found was going from 44 times my sustainable level to 3.2 times the sustainable level. So more than a tenfold uh, drop in my negative impact. Um, my life actually, my quality of life went up tremendously. Yeah. And uh, you, know, you need to do it smartly. It's very doable. And the world we're going into is going to be much better as long as we act courageously. And we we live it with our values, we live it with integrity.